Fine. So looks like some of us are joining a little late. So uh, we'll probably wait for a minute before we start the session itself. But meanwhile, uh, can you all tell me what is going on in your schools? You can tell the name of the school and what is going on. You can type in, you can speak also. Right. Others? All right. Yashanko unit send measurement. Differentiation in RNR. Units and dimensions in PSBB. Okay. So other than PSBB, Rajajinagar, Yashanpur, NPS. No other school? DPS East motion in one day. Okay. So in, uh, in the Rajajinagar, in Rajajinagar, they are starting, they have finished units and dimensions. In Rajinagar, have they finished motion, uh, units and dimensions? Okay. All right, in Yashudpur, they have started book two as well. That is little uh, different. Okay. So, see, some of us uh, probably have uh, done differentiation or integration also in the school. Okay. And even I'm planning to do it. All right. But that is coming uh, probably the next week. So the way I have planned this chapter motion in a straight line or motion in one day, I will do everything that doesn't require integration or differentiation. Okay. Once we are done with all of those things, then we will do the differentiation, integration, and the problems related to that. Understood? So we'll be doing everything. Don't worry. Okay. Somebody is asking about the test. All of you have seen that there is a notification of the test. Have you seen the WhatsApp messages? Yes or no? Some of you have not. <laughs> so the test will be exactly like how, let's say the notification went for two tests, right? One was neat pattern test. Other was J main pattern test. Okay. Exactly the way neat pattern happens. That's the way the test will be for the neat pattern test. And same way for the J main also the way J main happens, that is how exactly it will be. The syllabus of that would be whatever we could cover, maybe a couple of days before the exam. All right. For example, the seventh uh, of July is the exam. Today is what? Today is 20, 23rd. So we'll be done with the motion in one day. So entire motion one day, including the derivatives integration will come fine all right so some of you have joined kvpy uh, group also look like many of us have joined there okay so now why the kvpy group was created first we need to understand that okay that kvpy group was created because whatever we are doing in the regular classes that is not sufficient to complete the kvpy syllabus all right however whatever is happening in the regular classes that is very much part of the kvpy syllabus fine so whatever is the extra that is required for that we'll be calling you extra okay now some of you are asking the exact schedule so the extra classes we will try to put some regime over it, but we cannot say that on every Monday there will be mathematics extra class or every Wednesday there will be chemistry extra class or things like that. All right. But I can tell you roughly about the classes. The KVP extra classes would be around maybe 8.15 or 8.30 p.m. We have to start because uh, your classes, for example, gets over at 8.30 itself. 
so on that day you will not be able to attend some other day right so four or five days you will be coming at around 8:15 or 8:30 for maybe one hour or so fine so that will be the schedule like till maybe uh, november mid fine and don't worry we are going to send the kvpy class reminders one day before okay so you'll be knowing that tomorrow there is a, a class or not right so depending on let's say uh, we need more classes for physics so maybe more classes of physics will happen extra classes and then suppose more classes of chemistry is required or oh, sorry less class of mathematics is required so less of mathematics will happen okay so that is how it will be understood anika is it clear all right so without further ado we can start now looks like some of us haven't joined yet so what we have done in the last session what was the last thing that we did can anybody tell me what was the last thing that we did let me unmute uh, all of you you can unmute yourself okay so you can unmute and speak also last thing did we do was the derivation of equation of motion graphical analysis graphically we have derived equation of motion all of you agree okay so is there any student who is completely new today i hope no all right so great we have done equation of motion have we done the fourth equation of motion or only three equation of motion fourth also fourth also okay do you remember what was the fourth equation of motion distance traveled in the nth second it was u plus half a 2n minus 1 correct do you have other equations like this b is equal to u plus at all right s equal to ut plus all of you write this down okay this these equations will be troubling you for the entire session so let us pay some respect to these equations v square equal to u square plus 2 as these are the equations that will be uh, applying for situations when what happens what is the condition when i can use these equation type in don't speak what should happen then only i can use these equations correct others quickly type in what should happen then only i can use these four equations correct constant acceleration if acceleration is not constant we cannot use it for example if i say that acceleration is changing with time let's say a is equal to t minus t square so acceleration depends on time it is not constant as time progresses acceleration also changes so for this we cannot use the equation but if let's say if i tell you acceleration is 2 meter per second square now it is fixed so with this i can use this equation okay i hope makes sense does anyone has any doubts here anyone has any doubts no okay okay now one final thing i want to discuss with you before jumping on to all the kind of numericals have you seen that in grade 9 when you were using these equations sometimes you write acceleration to be positive sometimes you write acceleration negative sometimes velocity is positive sometimes negative have you observed that yes or no everyone have you observed that or not right so have i discussed about the signs in the last session i have been right so i'll discuss it quickly so write down the sign convention
when to take what positive and negative by the way till grade uh, 9th okay we have remembered many things because we were not aware of uh, the uh, you know few basics that is why we remembered some thumb rules that if it is deceleration we'll always take it negative all right so that way we have uh, you know remembered some things what i am telling you is you don't need to remember any of that okay in fact if you don't remember all of that it will help you okay so we are going to follow a sign convention going forward which looks like this okay we are dealing with vector quantities all of you understand right we are dealing with vectors which have directions for example velocity displacement acceleration all three have directions right so what we will do is that we will assume all of you write down assume one direction to be positive okay you can say that this direction is positive what will happen to the opposite direction all of you opposite direction would be correct very good opposite direction would be negative all right so let me uh, write this down here now all of you listen let's say there is a numerical okay now god hasn't come and told us that okay every time right hand side if velocity is there take it positive every time upward acceleration is there take that as positive no it's nothing like that okay so in a problem we are going to assume let's say right hand side positive that is what we are assuming so if velocity is on the right hand side then the value of velocity is positive if acceleration is on the left hand side then acceleration is negative value fine similarly let's say if you assume downward to be positive if downward is positive and if acceleration is downward so will you write acceleration positive or negative you will write it positive right because in that direction which you have assumed acceleration is there so if velocity is upward velocity is upward you will assume it to be positive or negative no <laughs> you you had you had assumed downward positive right velocity is upward so velocity becomes negative velocity becomes negative right so we are going to throw all this garbage from our head that every time one direction is permanently positive one direction is permanently negative all that is not true okay you will get a correct answer only don't worry fine so we don't need to break our head what is positive what is negative and one more thing there is nothing called as deceleration okay there is nothing called deceleration acceleration is there if acceleration is in the direction of velocity you call it acceleration only and if acceleration is in opposite direction of velocity you call it deceleration okay so let's not use the word deceleration going forward it is acceleration only but in opposite direction of the velocity clear okay so now most of these uh, things gets cleared when we solve numericals only if we don't solve numerical all of these things will just keep our uh, mind occupied with lot of doubts okay somebody is asking can we use the word retardation no only acceleration is there only acceleration is there for example let's say this is this is the initial velocity okay this is the initial velocity u is equal to 5 meter per second this way all right and you have acceleration that way acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second square fine so if you are saying that u is equal to plus 5 meter per second 
what you have to write accession as everyone if this is plus 5 accession is minus 2 meter per second square minus 2 meter per second square right and if if you write u as minus 5 meter per second what will be the acceleration plus 2 meter per second square so in in this case in this case we assumed that direction to be positive here we are assuming that direction to be positive nothing is uh, you know incorrect that is all proper only okay is it clear i hope it is clear let us solve numericals so that things become even more clear <laughs> okay somebody is saying in case 2 minus 5 in case 2 minus 5 is retardation minus 5 aditya you can speak up unmute and speak aditya anand yes speak okay no problem now what are you asking i am not understanding but in the case to minus 5 is retardation minus 5 is velocity this is velocity see it it is going to be uh, you know because till 9th we assume that you know we assume that retardation means negative acceleration yes or no all of us assume that retardation means negative acceleration right but here i am telling you that even though it is retardation it can be positive positive negative depends on which direction you are assuming positive getting it retardation in a way if you really want to use retardation or deceleration it only means that acceleration and velocity are of opposite signs that's all okay so keep your head open as in keep your mind open think in a very uh, let's say open minded way then only you will be able to solve numerical like as if you're solving a puzzle fine so let us take a couple of simple straight forward questions to understand what i have written here right then it will be a little bit more clear so let's do that whatever i am scribbling you need to note it down because it will not show when i'll share this uh, ppt with you in the group fine so let's say there is a uh, there is this uh, uh, tower of height uh, 10 meters 10 meters is the height okay and uh, you have a ball here this is a ball okay this ball is thrown up with a initial velocity of 2 meter per second okay assume throughout that the acceleration is downwards of 10 meter per second square fine you need to find out the time time taken to reach the ground find out all of you which equation do you think you'll be using okay okay try it try it try it everyone try it quick
those who are joining late can you tell me why you are joining late was is there any thing that you cannot avoid Wi-Fi got disconnected. Alarm went off. Okay. All right. So I can see some of you are answering. Great. Shall I? Shall I discuss now? Shall I discuss now? okay many of you got the answer but then all of you getting different different answers let me tell you that okay how the particle will move everyone how it will move it will go up reach a maximum height and then go downwards like this it will travel like that okay now this is my initial point and this is my final point do i know the value of displacement what is the displacement everyone displacement is down this displacement is a vector right it is down all of you agree it is 10 10 meters is displacement right so if i have to write the variables with the sign i will first have to assume one direction positive which direction do you think should i assume positive although it doesn't matter you'll get the correct answer only which direction should we assume positive everyone it doesn't matter though but what do you have taken you can tell me that i am sure all of you have taken upward positive or oh, downward positive some of you taken great okay good to see that tried something new anyways so we'll take upward positive and downward then will become negative so acceleration is minus 10 displacement is minus 10 initial velocity is plus 2 all of you agree with all of this right now we will use s equal to ut plus half at square okay somebody asking how displacement minus 10 this is your initial position this is your final position so displacement is what a line connecting initial to the final so this is the displacement from here till there initial to final clear aryan so displacement is minus 10 now i know why there is a discomfort i'll discuss that don't worry s u is plus 2 into t acceleration is minus 10 half 10 into t square so the equation you'll be getting is 5t square minus 2t Minus ten is equal to zero. Has anybody got this equation? Okay, all right. So this will give you the value of time when you solve this quadratic equation. I'm not solving it because final answer doesn't matter here. So this is the way you solve it. Now some of you might be wondering. Plus ten? No, it is minus ten only. this will go on the left hand side displacement is minus 10 okay now some of you might be wonder how many of you wondering that it we are not considering the fact that it is going up and then coming down so this time i have not considered how, how many of you thinking like that it goes up and then comes down so what about this time <laughs> i know you will be worried about that but let me tell you it is automatically considered okay 
For example, if you solve it like this, what will happen is when it goes up, when it goes up and comes back, okay, then same velocity two meter per second, which is upward right now, when it comes back, becomes downward. All of you agree? Yes or no? This two, which was upward, why it is coming down becomes same value but downward. So instead of plus two, you will have to then substitute minus two there. Then, if you want to consider this time is t one, this time is t two, and that time is t three. Total answer is t one plus t two plus t three. Then, in order to find t three, you need to consider velocity as minus two. Right now, you're considering as plus two. Do you all understand what I'm doing here? Type in. Okay, so. So here, all of you, all of you know it, but then we are not accepting. What are we not accepting? We are not accepting that S is displacement. We are not accepting that S is. We are not accepting that X S, which is the displacement, is the distance between initial and final point. We want to consider this also, but will that add up any displacement going up and coming down? Displacement will it add up anything? Will not add up anything, right? Displacement would be ten meters downward only. Doesn't affect displacement. And this equation s equal to u t plus half t squared. This is displacement. So it does not matter where it goes. You will get a correct answer only. Those who are still wondering, no, no, it should be a different answer. Do one thing. Try this way. And then try that way also, splitting the motion into three parts. Find out t one, t two, and t three, and then compare whether you get the same answer. You will get the same answer. Fine. But you can see directly we are getting the answer without splitting it. Okay. So let us solve more and more questions in order to understand this concept. This we have done. Have you done this question last time round? Do you remember doing this? No. Okay. Do this quick. This is not related to equation of motion. Definition of average acceleration. It is. Find out quickly what is the answer. Done. Anybody? What is the answer? Okay, different different answers people are getting. All right. Okay, some of you are getting zero also. Now look at this. Car is traveling. Let's say this direction. This way it is going with twenty meter per second. And after twenty second, it starts going the other way with twenty meter per second. All of this happens in how much time? Twenty seconds. Okay. Now, whatever we have written is without signs. We are dealing with vectors. We represent the direction with the signs. So, if I consider that direction positive. 
then the initial velocity is plus 20 final velocity is how much if initial is plus 20 final is what correct minus 20 i can as well say initial is minus 20 final is plus 20 then and the time taken is 20 seconds right so average acceleration as you all know final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time taken so final velocity is minus 2 minus 20 initial is plus 20 divided by 20 so you will get minus 2 meter per second square some of us are getting plus 2 meter per second square that is perfectly fine you have probably taken the other direction if you take that direction positive you will get positive acceleration if you've taken that direction positive you will get a negative acceleration that is fine not a problem is it clear to those who got a different answer some of you said zero is it clear all right do this delta t is time taken delta t is t only don't worry about it delta t you can say final time minus initial time so that is amount of time taken definition of average velocity you remember or not what is average velocity definition change in velocity minus time divided by time taken Anyone close to the answer? Okay. I, I think some of you are guessing the answer without finding it out. You just think that it is the answer so that is what you're telling me are you using any uh, let's say equation of motion or anything like that to get the answer those who have answered just guessed it so whenever you guess please write down on your notebook whenever you guess going forward in physics you will get it wrong you have to write it down somewhere and keep reminding yourself That's the nature of physics now. It will be deceptive. Okay, shall I discuss now? All of you have tried? Okay, look at this. I'll tell you the way of solving any numerical. Okay. So let all of you focus. Saket, S is not given, na? You have to tell me the answer in terms of V1 and V2 only. That is, that are the only thing that are given. Okay. Listen here, everyone. Particle is going with, okay, Vishnu got the correct answer. Focus here, everyone. Particle is moving with uniform equation. So 
can i use equation of motion here all of you yes or no i can use equation of motion because acceleration is constant it is uniform so i can use it so that is what they are trying to tell us so at point a velocity is v1 at point b velocity is v2 c is a midpoint you have to find velocity at point c okay this distance is d by 2 total distance is d so half and half all right now d is not given all of you remember d is not given but doesn't matter in order to solve numerical we assume it whatever it is it is d and then at the end we need to remove we need to remove d from the answer okay so let's say they are asking velocity at point c so let's say velocity is v okay and uniform acceleration is also not given to us it is just written acceleration is uniform so let's say this direction acceleration is a so can you tell me what should be v in terms of d a v1 or v2 can you tell me what should be v how to get that is it correct to write v square equal to v1 square plus 2a into d by 2 do you all agree type in right so what what i am trying to do here whenever we solve physics numerical first i will try to directly get the answer so th there is nothing wrong with it this is the correct answer v is equal to square root of v1 square plus ad that's a correct answer this answer is correct but we cannot use a and d all right so although this is a correct answer but we need to remove a and d from the answer so what we do we go back to the question and see can we use something else to find out what is the value of a into d and the answer is yes you can write v2 square is equal to v1 square correct plus 2a into d right so a into d is equal to v2 square minus v1 square divided by 2 so that you have to substitute here to get the answer so v is equal to v1 square plus v2 square minus v1 square by 2 square root of that so you will get it as v1 square plus v2 square by 2 square root so again final answer not important understand the thought process how we are getting the answer in the first step itself you write down what they are asking in terms of whatever variable you can assume and then look at what are the extra things that are there in your answer and try to remove those extra things from whatever else is given in the question is the method clear the way you solve the numerical is it clear everyone yes omkar you can unmute yourself i mean once in a while you can unmute yourself don't be completely mute yes omkar sir uh, huh? i don't understand the part with uh... with what so so can you hear me yeah tell me tell me oh uh, yeah uh, after the part where you uh, assume the distance and the first equation the the second one the v is equal to v square plus ad can you could uh, you explain that part this is third equation of motion do you remember this yes sir i'm using this between this point and that point so final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square plus 2a into s s is d by 2 
Oh, okay, sir. Hmm. Thank you. Same way, I have used between A and B also. Between any two points, I can use that equation. All right. Okay, so let us move ahead. Mute yourself. Yes, yes. We we are going to solve more and more questions. Don't worry. All right. So we will solve more questions. Things will become even more clear. Okay. So this thing we have done, right? I hope you remember that we have done this. Distance traveled in the nth second, u plus half a into 2n minus 1. Okay. Do this. Sir, will derivation be asked in exams? Yes, yes. Derivations in your school exams, they will ask. Okay. But not in the competitive exams. Get the answer here. Every physics question, draw a diagram, okay? Always remember that. Which subject you guys are finding most difficult till now out of the three? Don't tell me physics. Physics. <laughs> okay, somebody said maths. Functions in maths. Okay. It'll hold on before you. Okay. Hold your horses. Mathematics is going to grow now. Physics also. Hey Chris, you are attending offline as well as online, is it? No. Fine, Raj Venkat got some answer. Anybody else? Anybody else? Assume that acceleration due to gravity G is 10 meter per second square. All right, so suppose total height is H. Okay, so the time of travel is how much? Let's say the last second is nth second. That is n seconds. So time of travel, I'll say total n second it takes to reach the bottom. All of you agree or not? Total n second it takes. Last second is nth second. Like for example, first second it travels this much, 
second second this much third second this much fourth this much and fifth it is here so one two three four five fifth second it has traveled 9h by 25 but the total time of travel is total 5 second which is assume it to be n seconds clear so i am going to use this value of n h in which equation i'll use it in s nth is equal to u plus half a 2n minus 1 so what is S in it? What should I write here? Tell me, what should I write instead of S n? Good. So nine H by 25. When you write nine H by 25, which direction you're assuming positive down or up? down or up you are assuming down so throughout the question throughout the question you will assume downward to be positive once you assume something so 9h by 5 9h by 25 is downward displacement that you are assuming plus so everything down is positive u is how much initial velocity is what initial velocity is zero so that's gone acceleration what should i write plus 10 or minus 10 Plus 10 because acceleration is down, you assume downward positive, right? So 10 into 2n minus 1. This is your first equation. Okay. Second equation will be what? Everyone, what will be my second equation? Any guesses? Correct. I am going to use S equal to UT plus half AT square. So if I write instead of S, if I write H, U is zero, half 10 into N square. Right? Do all of you understand these two equations? Anybody has any doubt? You tell now itself. Otherwise, once I'm done completely about to go, you tell that, can you go back to the previous slide? I have doubt. Okay, somebody is asking how t square equal to 2n minus 1. Where t square is 2n minus 1? This is the formula for the distance traveled in the nth second. And this is the substitution for that. And this is the substitution for s equal to ut plus half a t square. Okay. Clear? Sn is nth. Snth is the distance traveled in nth second. Derivation we did, right? Last session, did we did the did we do the derivation? Some of, some of you saying we haven't done the derivation. We haven't. Yeah, we have done it. We have done it. You're making me do it same thing twice. <laughs> All right. You missed the last class. That is why you are asking that. Anyways, any other doubt? Okay, some of you are asking G is 10, is it? Actual value of G is 9.8 meter per second square. And even that keeps changing at different parts of the world. But roughly it is 9.8. But in order for you to solve the question easily, we have considered it to be 10 meter per second square. Okay. Now, can you tell me an easy way of solving this? Rn 2n minus 1 doesn't become n square. This equation is different. That equation is different. Okay. You have two equations. How will you solve this? What is the easy way of solving it? Two equations, two variables. You have to find h. What, what is the next thing you will do? Quick. Substitute. Okay. That is one way I like to divide. I like to divide here. When I divide it, 
when i divide it h is gone okay so all of this is gone i get a quadratic equation all right when you get a quadratic equation it becomes easy to solve then okay so 9 by 25 is equal to 2n minus 1 divided by n square so 9n square is equal to 50n minus 25 okay so this will give you the value of n this quadratic equation will give you the value of n all right now what if one of the roots comes out to be negative if n comes out to be negative then what you will do from this equation let's say n comes out to be less than 0 one value is less than 0 and other value is more than 0 one value less than other value is more than 0 then what do you do take more than 0 ignore this less than 0 1 time can not be time taken cannot be less than 0 fine okay so this is how you solve this particular question fine so you know when we were in grade 9 then also we were using the same equations but i hope you are realizing slowly and slowly that the difficulty level of the question has increased slightly okay so that is why you need to do lot of practice otherwise we will remain the same level which was in grade 9th just a second acha hai uh, okay this we have done right this is the graphical question do this question everyone yeah. so what was the solution of the previous one i have solved entire thing na what what do you want to know final answer is it yes just for verification yeah. you will get n equal to 5 you will get okay once you get n equal to 5 now you can get the value of h is it clear yes sir thank you okay do this question everyone somebody asking is today only practice problems my dear friend is 95% of your preparation do you think you have learned any new theory what do you learn in ninth uh, have you learned anything different in theory no so if you are only interested in theory you don't need to study in 11th but then it's all about numericals so focus on it all right but yes we are, we are going to do little bit of theory also relative velocity we i am going to introduce today after the break we'll talk about theory but right now problems what does acceleration displacement curve represent area of that represents what do you remember that area of acceleration displacement represents look at your notes area of acceleration versus displacement represents what look at your notes none of you answering it properly what was it no one no one got it correct till now i don't know why you are uh, not looking at your notes v square minus u square divided by 2 this is the area okay now do it get the answer so please query x and y will by 2 not hold on i will launch a poll for this question okay i'll give you one minute here the i did explain last class did, you you were not there when we were talking about the graphs who was this yeah zayan you were there na so why you are asking why divided by 2 
you forgot just go through that previous no i remember now it was we say so now i got it way we cannot go back again and again we you know the, we have lack of time so better come prepared for the classes and if you do your assignments then you will not forget all right so should i launch the poll now should i launch the poll let me launch it acha by the way has anybody got the answer unnecessary i am launching the poll otherwise okay couple of you have got it pick the correct option all right so i am ending the poll now so it is all over the place actually people have picked option a some of you b some of you c so let me not show you the result of that poll right now so the area is this area is this right there is no doubt about it so we will first find out the area so let's say this area is a1 this area is a2 so total area would be what a1 plus a2 or a1 minus a2 how will i have to consider how will i have to consider it will be a1 minus a2 remember below the below the x axis you have to consider negative area okay so a1 is half of base which is 10 into height minus half of this base is 5 into height again although that is not given i am assuming that is also 5 only minus 5 it is so this is what it is all right so you will get here mm-hmm. 25 by 2 25 by 2 is uh, the particle starts from rest so because it starts from rest the initial velocity is zero so this is equal to final velocity square divided by 2 right so initial velocity is zero so final velocity is square by 2 so final velocity is 5 meter per second so answer is a is this clear type in quick i think it was direct formula substitution we are directly finding the area and equating what that should be some of us might be finding this also tricky the reason is because you have not remembered that what area represent all right it is not tricky it's a direct formula substitution kind of question all right okay how did you get v square divided by 2 sadna you were there in the last session in the last class were you there so there we discussed entire derivation how it comes the area of area displacement curve do you not remember i'll just quickly uh, listen 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 here let's say if a this is acceleration this is displacement so acceleration is constant right now so area is what acceleration into displacement this is acceleration and this much displacement this is acceleration into displacement and if acceleration is constant i can say v square equal to u square plus 2 as so a into s which is the area comes out to be v square minus u square by 2 all right so that we are doing only for the constant acceleration but this i have proved in the last class that whether acceleration is constant or not area is always v square minus u square by 
So this derivation I did for you when equation is constant. Clear now, Sadna? Okay. All right, should I launch the poll for this question? Here is the poll. And comes the poll. Use your common sense. Okay, there is no equation, nothing like that will be used here. Common sense. Only two of you haven't taken the poll. Why? What happened? Uh, now only one person is left. Okay, so I'm ending the poll now. This is what we have. Most of us have picked B. Some of us have picked A, C and D also. Let us see what. What is the problem with A? Can anybody tell? What is the problem with A? You can unmute and tell. Distance can't be negative, so it can't go down. Distance cannot be negative, but where is the distance negative here? So it's reducing back to zero. You can't. So distance only increases, it will never decrease. Okay, that's a problem with A. What is the problem with C? The same. Plus it can't in, be negative. In mm -hmm. fact, it is becoming negative. Can distance be negative? No. Same issue with D. Distance cannot go down. Distance always increases. That is true only with D. Okay. Do this. Quickly do it. This is, uh, these are the questions where everybody knows how to solve, but Still, people make silly errors. I will launch a poll after one and a half minute for this. Swarali, you joined just now. One hour late. What happened? So can you help me? Yeah, tell me. You can so, type in. You don't no no no. Type in, type in. Okay, fine. Okay. All right, should I launch the poll? Poll is coming in your way. And here it is, the poll. Ending the poll now. Ending it. And here it ends. Share the results. Most of us have picked option C, but substantial amount have picked B as well. Let us see. Okay, so before I proceed, I'll again tell you that some of us are in a mode of let sir do everything. I will copy it down in my notebook. Then I will read it after the class gets over. 
that mode will not work for the competitive exams any competitive exam this will not work okay you should not wait for me to solve so that you copy it down otherwise you can just copy down from the uh, from the modules you can copy down everything it is written better than my notes all right but then we are here to discuss about the doubts discuss the questions and if you have any doubts you ask all right so don't worry about uh, you know getting any question wrong or thinking that what sir will think about me what others will feel about me so all that is nonsense don't bring that in your head all right and anyway those who are answering most of the time they are getting it wrong only right so it is fine whatever you get it or not get it you need to interact fine don't just sit without interaction anyways anyways let us solve this question now ball is released from rest from the roof of building of height 45 cm 45 m <laughs> cm to too small so the height is 45 t equal to 0 find the height of the ball from the ground at t equal to 2 second now some of us may be in a hurry you might have found out height from the top they are asking height from the ground right so they will make you do the silly mistake they will try to induce all sorts of mistakes from your side anyways so at 2 seconds from t equal to 0 it dropped so which equation you use to find how much it has moved ut plus half at square let us try to use gs 10 only so s is equal to u which is 0 half into t square so 2 into 2 so as expected 20 meters is there in the option but answer is what what is the answer is 20 meters is the answer <laughs> answer is 25 which is 45 minus 20 they are asking from the ground look look at the thing here they are making you do the silly mistake yes or no this option is sitting here what does it mean what does it mean <laughs> this means that they want you to make silly mistake all right and if you are not careful enough you are anyway making silly mistake and they want you to make the silly mistake then higher chances that you will make fine so i think most of us have picked option b right am i correct c okay good but some of us have made silly mistake all right here comes the next objective question after one and a half minute i'll open up the poll so should i launch the poll some of you are saying they are done yeah mentally done will be wrong don't worry
every physics question make a habit of drawing little bit of diagram writing the equations getting the answer okay maybe ct level questions you can you need not draw but if you don't have practice of drawing the diagrams and stuff like that you'll never be able to do some tricky ones shall shall i launch the poll everyone okay here is the poll my voice is breaking is it is it true somebody saying my voice is breaking no 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 it's not so check your internet connection check your internet connection i'll just show you my internet speed okay so that so the thing is the voice may break because of your internet connection also okay so i have only this much but still that's good enough 50 mbps i have and probably just check in your house itself maybe uh, some of uh, maybe your brothers or sisters they might be watching youtube or something like that just tell them wait for some time okay so bandwidth you need to release if internet speed is less at your home but yeah sometime it happens on my side also but not today anyways so let us solve this question there is a parachutist who bails out and falls from 5 meter when his parachute opens so after 5 meters after dropping 5 meters the parachute opens so before opening the parachute it will gain a initial velocity or not it'll gain the initial velocity or not oh do i need to launch the poll sorry i forgot that yeah take the poll quick Zayan, you're telling your internet speed two forty nano mbps or two forty mbps. All right, so I'll end this poll now. Ending it and it ends. People have mostly picked up option B, but option A is also. there let us see all right so we have a situation here uh falls for 5 meters so this is a free fall okay the deceleration produced is 1 meter per second so after this after this free fall there is a deceleration they are saying deceleration but remember deceleration just means acceleration in opposite direction of velocity that's all okay reaches the ground reaches the ground at zero velocity you need to find what is the height from where it he or she falls let's say total height is h okay after 5 meters parachute opens okay now it will by this time this person have gained some initial velocity before parachute opens so after this point till this point acceleration is vertically downward acceleration was equal to g now after parachute opens what direction will be the acceleration is 1 2 3 after point 2 acceleration is upwards acceleration is 1 meter per second square in upward direction and when it reaches the ground the final velocity is zero clear so this is the situation now 
you need to split the question into two parts yes or no one to two and then two to three why why i had to split the question into two parts because although acceleration is constant in one chunk of the flow like one to two acceleration is constant two to three is also constant but throughout one to three it is not constant are you getting it so between one and three directly i cannot use equation of motion because acceleration is changing between one and three i can use equation of motion between one and two and then between two and three understood all of you type in all right now now you remember how we solve the physics question we will try to directly get the answer h is asked so from 2 to 3 this distance would be what what do you think this distance is Two to three is h minus five, right? H minus five. We have final velocity zero. We don't know initial velocity. Acceleration is uh, minus one meter per second square between two and three. So, which equation should I use to find h between two and three? I'll be using v square equal to u square plus two a s. can anybody tell me why i have chosen to use this equation why not the other two we don't know anything about the time and we know about the displacement so displacement should be there in the otherwise what you will find right final velocity is zero initial velocity we do not know plus plus or minus minus it will be minus 2 deceleration is 1 or acceleration is 1 in a opposite direction of velocity so if downward is positive upward is negative 2 into 1 into displacement is what s is positive or negative positive negative i am taking downward positive so displacement is positive so 2 acceleration 1 and s is h minus 5 so this is my first equation and this should give me the value of h but what is the problem problem is i do not know we don't know what is u so how will you find u you do find u between 1 to 2 it is a free fall so for a free fall you can use this same equation you can use this same equation for the free fall right so ye ha you have final velocity is actually the initial velocity of 2 to 3 final velocity of 1 to 2 is initial velocity of 2 to 3 so u square is actually v square 0 Okay, plus two into g is ten, and displacement is five. So from here, u comes out to be ten meter per second. Okay, u comes out to be ten meter per second at point two. Now what? Just substitute the values. So ten square is hundred minus two h plus ten. So from here. h comes out to be 110 divided by 2 which is 55 meters is it clear to all of you type in this is how j main questions would be everyone type it just spend couple of seconds here go through and type in is it clear Yeah, yeah, this is J main, J main level. You can say. Some of you are saying that do we need to subtract 
five from the height. No, they are asking from which height they bail out. So it is written right. It is bails. It bails out. Fine. Clear. Let us move forward. Do this, everyone. This is a numeric value type. You get x as integer. After this question, probably we can start something new. Uh, then once that theory is done, we can again come back to the problem solving. You can directly type in your answers because no point putting a poll for this. Pratik got something, others? Saket got something. I hope you have converted kilometer per hour into meter per second. Any other answer? Gayatri got something. Okay. All right, different, different answers people are getting. Let us solve it now. Let us solve it now. Vishnu also got something, Naren got it, Chris got it. Fine. Everyone, truck is moving with this velocity. If you convert into meter per second, how much this is? Twenty meter per second. So the driver can produce the deceleration. Now, you know, they, they say deceleration, but 
you need to keep your head clear about it deceleration means opposite direction of the velocity so if you say initial velocity is plus 20 meter per second acceleration would be how much minus 2 fine the stopping distance of the truck is something if reaction time of the driver is 0.2 second so for for 0.2 second what will happen for 0.2 seconds acceleration is zero all right for 0.2 second acceleration is zero so they are asking about how much distance it will move so there will be two distances two accelerations are there for 0.2 second acceleration is zero for rest of the time acceleration is minus 2 so distance travel for 0.2 second is the initial velocity into 0.2 second so that is 4 meters then i have to find out distance traveled when initial velocity is this and it stopped with because of the deceleration which equation should i use which equation should i use ford third that is v square equal to u square plus 2 as i know that final velocity is zero i know my initial velocity 20 square it is then acceleration is minus 2 so 2 into 2 into s so what it comes out to be s comes out to be 400 divided by 4 that is 100 so total distance is total is 104 104 it is now what is given stopping distance is 13x so 104 if it is equal to 13x x is equal to what 8 and 8 it is this is an actual question of j main few years back somebody asking how did you get 4 meters look at what they are writing they are writing reaction time is 0.2 second reaction time means what reaction times means what reaction times mean that before you apply the brake it takes 0.2 seconds okay you will react you will not react with in 0 seconds right so but then before you apply the brake deceleration won't happen so for 0.2 second the truck will move with a constant velocity so it will travel little bit of distance which is velocity into time which is 4 meters okay and then deceleration will kick in clear rajvin cut so total displacement is 4 meter which is because of its reaction time plus deceleration time this deceleration distance all of you type in is it clear all right okay okay so should we continue doing numericals or should we do something new we can come back to the numericals later also right so let us go to something new i have just too many questions prepared for you but we will do something new write down relative velocity now has it ever happened to you uh, i hope all of you have traveled once in a while in a train okay has it ever happened that you are standing in a platform and uh, you you think that your train has started moving and then you later realize that it is not your train it is a train next to you that is moving has it ever happened
right it happens to almost everyone and then then what you do you look at the platform and see that okay i am moving relative to the platform or not forget about the train you then stop looking at the train you look at the platform and then you realize that you are stationary <laughs> right so that kind of study is what we are going to do now fine that is called relative motion or relative velocity okay and um, unfortunately it is removed from your ncert curriculum okay so in your school they will not teach you but then it is a very much an important part of any comedy exams you write fine so let us proceed now why you see something moving relative to yourself first of all when we say an object is moving okay then that object is always moving with respect to you only all right because if you actually look at it then uh, you can say that earth is moving whatever is on the earth that also moving earth revolves around the sun sun is also moving galaxy is also moving and the universe is expanding so will you be ever able to say that something is at rest absolutely will you be ever be able to say or find out that something is at rest per, uh, you know absolute rest is it possible to say never never in fact there is no experiment in this world that can tell you whether you are at rest or moving with uniform velocity you just cannot experience the difference between being at rest or uniform velocity okay so but then yes when you are in a train as soon as the speed increases little bit the vibration starts you while you are on the rails so then you start feeling that you are moving but suppose vibration is completely absent okay then you will not feel that you are moving if velocity of the train is constant okay so this is this has to do with while you are observing something what are you doing let's say i am standing at a place and looking at something okay then if that object is moving it means that distance between me and the object is changing or at least the location of the other object relative to me it is changing then only i will say that the person or that object is moving because if i start let's say if i start running and that object or a person also starts running then distance between me and the person is constant so i will not feel that that ob that person is moving fine although i know for the fact that i am running so other person is also running but if for for a small for a split second if you forget that you can feel whether you are running or not then if the distance between you and the other person doesn't change then for you that person is at rest okay now the picture in front of you that lady is sitting inside the train that lady uh is looking outside so relative to this lady the train the the trees are moving backwards the poles and trees everything is moving backwards although the common sense uh, will be there and the lady will know that why it is happening okay but we are not here to talk about why it is happening it is kinematics it is happening or not that trees are moving backward all of you agree or not although you know why it is moving backward that is fine but with respect to you are you feeling that tree is moving backward when you are in a when you are in a moving train yes or no right so that is what we are going to study and this is a very very important study this is the basis of uh, general theory of relativity also which einstein has founded in fact einstein told us that not only the velocity distance 
even the time is relative okay so that becomes very complex then right anyways so moving forward moving forward write down now let's not discuss relativity uh, the di different principles apply over there okay anyways so when i say relative velocity or relative motion okay i can say relative acceleration also so whenever i say velocity i mean the something similar for the acceleration also okay so if i write velocity u a b it means that i am talking about velocity of a relative to b okay if i write x a b it means displacement of a relative to b if i write acceleration a b it means acceleration of a relative to b clear right so let us see how these things come out fine look at this although this this looks a little uh, you can say uh, mathematical don't worry uh, only for the explanation purpose we are using mathematics here uh, while doing the problem solving none of these things will be there don't worry okay now look at this everyone this is object a object b is located there object a is located here this is this, this is you can say a person standing on the ground like this okay now this person is observing a so this person will say that a is this much distance away clear person b will say that a is that much distance away all right now if you see that if you can use triangle law of addition here you can say that the x coordinate between uh, b and g plus x coordinate between b and a if you add it up you will get the x coordinate between g and a does it make sense everyone let me say this is 2 comma 1 okay this is uh, 0 comma 0 okay so plus this would be let's say 4 comma this 2 comma 3 4 comma 2 this is what it is all right now the x coordinate g to b the x coordinate of b minus x coordinate of g it is 2 this value is 2 from b to a the change in the x coordinate is again 2 from 2 it has become 4 so 2 plus 2 you can directly measure from g to here that is also 4 only so 2 plus 2 4 no, nothing special is written here same thing okay now you can see here you can write x a b measurement of a's distance from b is equal to measurement of a is distance from g minus measurement of b from g okay and if you differentiate it i think some of you will find it uh, this thing little messed up lot of mathematics is there but don't worry soon everything will start making sense so just hold on for some time okay now 
someone is asking what is the point of understanding that graph the point of understanding that graph is this so x coordinate of a relative to b is x coordinate of a minus x coordinate of b all right so similar way you can write velocity velocity of a with respect to b is equal to velocity of a minus velocity of b b is the observer that can move all right same way you can write for the acceleration acceleration of a relative to b is acceleration of a minus acceleration of b now let me quickly summarize it because i can sense uh, people are getting confused here listen here everyone so let me go back and uh, do this again all right so there is this object a there is object a all right which is observed by two people one is standing here and another person is standing here this person is at rest and this person is moving okay so both of them will see the same thing or both of them will see two different things how a is moving all of you if b is moving and a is at rest both of them both of them will see different things right now what i am trying to do i am trying to what i am trying to find out is what b will see in terms of what a is seeing that is what i am trying to find out okay what well, that is what i am trying to find out so i am trying to find out velocity of a relative to b got it i know velocity of a relative to someone at rest till now we always dealt with velocity of an object relative to someone at rest okay so when we write velocity is 5 meter per second it means that it means that someone who is at rest observing that velocity okay let's say some object is moving with 5 meter per second someone standing here will observe it to be 5 meter per second but what if this person also start moving with 5 meter per second then what this person will see will it see 5 meter per second what that person will see everyone if both of them start moving with the same velocity 5 and 5 a will observe what velocity of b zero a will feel as if the velocity of b is zero right so this is what i am trying to find out what i am trying to find out what i am trying to find out that if i move with certain velocity then what exactly i will see clear clear everyone is it clear or not okay fine now let us not get into too much of mathematics of it but this is what i am trying to achieve here fine so when that is understood then let us use little bit of common sense and then you will see that these equations make very easy sense all right for example let's say there is object a going this way 2 meter per second this is a and b is going this way 2 meter per second so what b will observe velocity of a to be
what b will observe velocity of a to b four right all of you agree you can say right four that is what it will see fine so if you substitute here values if you consider let's say this equation is correct then if velocity of a is positive so you write plus 2 minus of velocity of b if a is positive b is negative so minus of minus 2 you get a 4 only you get a 4 only that is what we have been getting it all right but if b also goes the same way as a is moving both are the same direction both are positive so 2 minus 2 should give you 0 all right now all of you understand why we are subtracting the two velocities to get velocity of a relative to b or should i simplify it more should i simplify it even more so that all of us are able to okay let me sim over simplify it i will completely simplify the situation here and let us talk about exactly how we solve numericals then it become very very simple okay forget about all of these things right now for us for some time let's talk about look at this example for ex for instance for instance look at this example okay so here here you can see that the the blue t-shirt girl was running but from behind somebody else came and won the race okay why because that other person was traveling faster now does it matter how fast that red t-shirt girl is running or what matters is how fast relative to the blue the red girl is running what matters whether the red t-shirt girl will win or not will depend on how fast the red girl is traveling compared to the blue all of you agree right so the if you just know how fast the red girl is running you will not be able to find out whether she will win or not but if you know that the blue is running with 2 meter per second the red is running with 5 meter per second and there is a certain distance to cover you will find out who will reach first fine so in order to understand the relative velocity i can introduce a very simple concept here write down velocity of approach everyone write down velocity of approach now you'll understand very very easily so suppose this kid is running with velocity v1 and that kid is also running with velocity let's say v2 so with what velocity they are approaching each other tell me with what velocity they are approaching each other all of you agree v1 plus v2 type in v1 plus v2 right and suppose suppose a distance between these two is d so can you tell me how much time it takes for them to meet anyone with this velocity they are approaching this is approach velocity so time taken is d divided by v1 plus v2 as simple as that as simple as that okay all right now v1 plus v2 what is v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 is velocity of approach it is also the relative velocity 
of first with respect to second or vice versa also it is true this is one and this is two so this person will feel as if the other person is approaching with v1 plus v2 got it the first person will feel as if the second one is approaching with v1 plus v2 so that is what is velocity of approach got it is this clear type in very clear right these are very very important thing that is why i am not proceeding because i think that some of you are not clear so i am standing here itself okay so let's let them meet okay now one thing that will help you a lot is this statement all of you write down an observer sees the world after subtracting velocity of approach is relative velocity only but looking at it in a different manner easier manner when you solve the problems use velocity of approach and separation don't use relative velocity approach of solving questions okay this thing probably you will not get in many textbooks so an observer sees the world after subtracting his or her own velocity or acceleration what does it mean it means that this is let's say this this kid is observer first kid is observer so this first kid will observe the velocity of the second kid after subtracting his own velocity let's say is actual velocity of the second kid is v2 the actual velocity of first kid was v1 v1 is negative v1 direction is opposite of v2 right so what the first person will see is v2 minus of minus v1 it has subtracted its own velocity fine that is what is velocity of approach so relative velocity and velocity of approach one and the same thing fine but when you look at it as if it is velocity of approach then things will make more sense because velocity of approach is something which is easier to understand now after velocity of approach what do you think the next logical thing should be after approach there should be correct velocity of separation as well fine so tell me tell me if this person was going with v1 velocity that person was going with v2 what is the velocity of separation here velocity of separation everyone with what velocity they are separating v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 both are going away from each other okay now here what is velocity of approach by the way how much is the velocity of approach the velocity of separation is v1 plus v2 velocity of approach is what it is negative of velocity of approach sorry velocity or velocity of separation velocity of approach is this way velocity of separation is that way so one is negative of other all right just like if velocity is this way positive opposite direction negative so separation is opposite of approach or not so one is negative of the other okay is it still confusing should i give more examples
more example should i give okay let me give few more in fact send the velocity approach you said was v1 plus v2 yes v1 plus v2 in that example it was v1 plus v2 both were coming together right both were trying to come close to each other so you need to add them up both are going away from each other so that is separation this is approach okay so you need to see what is happening then only you can say what is the answer for example let me give you certain situations here everyone let's say this distance is 10 meters two objects are there fine this object is going this way with let's say 2 meter per second okay that object is going this way with 5 meter per second okay you need to tell me you need to tell me uh, first of all velocity of separation then time for the separation to become 20 meters these two things do it velocity separation is what you can type in first that correct most of us have got the correct answer velocity of separation is 5 plus 2 anybody has any doubt in this type in anybody has any doubt velocity of separation is 7 meter per second no doubts separation is 7 meter per second means what with this velocity with this velocity they are going away from each other now tell me here what is the answer time for separation to become 20 meters initial separation is 10 so how much extra separation was done how much extra separation was done how much extra separation 10 more so with 7 meter per second extra 10 meter was covered so the time is 10 divided by 7 clear type in okay somebody is asking if same was velocity of approach it would be minus 7 yes minus 7 but they are not approaching each other they are going away you know it so shall i take another something similar to make concept even more uh, better let us do that no still it is not clear for some i will keep on taking example till it is clear to everyone now you know remember the previous question suppose the previous question you have to do the previous question uh by let's say by usual method without using velocity separation suppose you have to do then what you have to do find out the distance traveled by 2 meters 2 meter per second velocity find out distance traveled by this velocity then add these two and equate it to 10 right so it was a longer way of getting the answer but if you use velocity separation which is indirectly using the relative velocity you will directly get the answer 
okay so that is why we are studying relative velocity we are studying relative velocity so that when more than one object is moving we can account for both the motions together clear when we use relative velocity we are factoring the effect of both the movements in one go itself otherwise you have to first look at what the first object is doing then look at what second object is doing then combine them get the answer answer you get that way also okay so let's take this one again this distance is 10 meters this velocity is let's say um 2 meter per second this way and this velocity is that way which is 7 meter per second okay you have to tell me time when both a and b meet and also location of a and b where are they i am trying to make relative velocity very very simple just use your common sense you get the answer many of you got the answer already what is the answer of the first part okay so i am trying to find out when a meets b when a meets me b so what is the total distance of approach total distance of approach is what everyone distance of approach is 10 meters right now distance between them is 10 it should reduce to zero or not distance between them which was 10 should reduce to zero so how much they have approached each other forget about that a might have moved lot more b might have moved lot more that doesn't matter what matters is how much was a distance before and how much is the distance now so total approach is 10 meters all of you agree This approach is ten meters. Velocity of approach is what? With what velocity they are approaching each other? Everyone, seven minus two. All of you agree. With seven, A is trying to go close to B, but B is trying to go away. With two, so actually seven minus two, which is Five meter per second. So the time is distance divided by speed, which is two seconds. Many of us get the answer in this case. Now, how much distance A would have traveled? A would have traveled seven into two, fourteen meters. B would have traveled two into two, which is four meters. So they will meet somewhere here. Where this distance is two, and that distance is fourteen. This fourteen. This is four. Sorry. How do you get two seconds? Distance of approach is ten, and velocity of approach is five. So distance is equal to velocity into time. Velocity is five. So t is two. What is the doubt? The, is this clear? does this make it clear no still there will be little bit of hesitation 
so what you can you know you can solve the same question by what you can say that in time t a will travel 7 into t distance okay in time t b will travel 2 into t distance if they have to meet distance traveled by a minus distance traveled by b should be equal to 10 and you get the same answer okay but you can directly get the answer like this so start looking things like this so after the break we are going to discuss more examples okay things are not yet over i know still there is a confusion i will keep on taking more and more examples here make sure you get it very very uh, properly in your head okay then uh, you know you will be able to solve many tricky questions in a very very simple manner fine so let us take a break now and we will meet on the other side of it
Okay, so can you all hear me? Type in, am I audible? Am I audible? All right. So let us take a few more examples here. Try doing this. Try doing this. Let us see. Everyone. I mean, I'm asking you something to do here where I have not considered acceleration while explaining to you, but I want to see if you can extrapolate and solve this question based on whatever we have learned till now. Let us see. What is the velocity of separation here? Velocity of separation is how much? I'm not solving. I'm just asking you the what is given here. All of you agree 50 meter per second, everyone? Right? Now, not only velocity, there is acceleration also. What is the acceleration of separation? Tell me. Acceleration of separation is what? Good to see some of the correct answers. Good. This acceleration is separating or approaching. One and one. Total two is approaching or separating. Both. Both are approaching one and one, two is approaching. So separating would be minus two. Okay. So that is the hint. Now do the uh, complete question, get the answer. Aditya got something, others? Any other answer, anybody else? Naren got something. Okay. Now tell me displacement, separation. How much away they have went from initial to the final position? Initial distance was 20. Now it is 60. So how much is the movement away? Separation is how much? 40 meters? 40 meters is there? They're asking T for it. T is what? So which equation will you use? Which equation will you use? You can use S equal to UT plus half AT square. That is a surprise, everyone. The same equation, you can use it for a approach or separation, all the displacement, velocity and acceleration should be of approach. 
or all of them should be of separation you can still use this okay now just substitute here as separation is okay i have written approach same thing is valid for the separation also separation is 40 initial velocity 50 into t plus half into minus 2 into t square so you have t square minus 50t plus 40 is equal to 0. Sum of the one of the students is asking, how is separation 40? Can anybody explain why separation is 40? Why it is 40? So shall I unmute and explain? Yeah. So, so initial separation is 20 meters. So in ah. order to get 60 meters separation, we need nothing but 60 minus 20, which is equal to 40 meters. So 40 meters more separation. Correct. So you don't need to you don't need to do anything to be separated by 20, right? Final separation is 60. So how much you have to work for? 60 minus 20, which is 40. Clear? All right. So what do you get from here? Has anybody solved it? This quality equation. No one. But anyways, when you solve this quad equation, you'll get the value of T. Is this, is this question very clear to everyone? Type in. Very clear. Do you want to solve more questions on velocity separation and approach? Okay, let us solve few more. So I hope all of you understand by now that physics is not about theory. That is very much clear or not? No longer about theory. Do this. When two objects are moving, better to use velocity of separation concept. Okay, somebody got the answer here. Okay. No, Arthur, probably, probably you may get minus 10 and plus 40. Just check it again. But meanwhile, do this question. But even 10 and 40 may be correct also. After this question, we'll discuss that, okay? But first, complete this. Yeah, just answer once. Otherwise, I'll feel as if, if you answer five times, I'll feel as if five students have answered.
All right, shall I discuss now? How much weight, Aditya? How much? So close. All right, so let us discuss now. B catches C, you need to find separation between A and C. When B catches C. So do, do you think that we need to first find out what is the time taken for B to catch C? Yes or no? Right? So what is the velocity of approach between B and C? What it is? With what velocity B and C are approaching each other? Everyone, 10 minus u or u minus 10? Approach. With what velocity they are approaching? 10 minus u or u minus 10? 10 is going away. u is coming close. So it is u minus 10. Okay. So time taken for them to meet is total distance covered D with velocity approach U minus 10. This is a time taken. Okay. Now in this time, separation between A and C is 3D. Right now, what is the separation? 2D. From 2D, it has become 3D. So total how much movement away? From 2D, it is going to 3D. So total, total is D distance. D distance, right? And it is separating. Velocity separation is what? Between A and C. What is the velocity separation? Plus 5 or minus 5? You guys are, some of you are making a lot of silly mistakes. Use common sense. Common sense. Don't do it mathematically like this. Common sense apply. They are separating or approaching first of all. This is 5, that is 10. They're going away. They're going away, right? Clearly. So separation velocity should be positive. 10 minus 5. 10 with 10 going away with 5 approaching. So net net is 5. Clear to everyone? So D distance of separation with five meter per second. Five meter per second is velocity of separation. So five into time taken D divided by U minus 10. This should be equal to D itself. Okay. So from here, you'll get U as 15. Clear? Go through it for 10 seconds. Go through it. Let me know if you have any doubts. There is no acceleration here, right? Then also a tricky question like this can be made. Can you please repeat the last step? In the last step, see the question has two parts, right? Question has two parts. The first part is you need to look at B and C. Okay. When you look at B and C, they're approaching with a velocity of u minus 10. The time taken for the approach is total distance approach, which is d, divided by velocity of approach, which is u minus 10. Okay. Then you have to look at a and c. Forget about b then. By the time b approaches c, distance between a and c becomes 3d. So from 2d, it is going to 3d. So total distance of separation is d. Velocity separation is 5. So 5 into time should be equal to D. Is it clear? Type in. 
Okay. This also J main level. Let's look at few more. You want to solve more questions on it, right? I can sense. I can sense. Still, it is not very clear. I'll keep on doing questions till all of you say that it is clear. Can you tell me what is the condition for this to happen? What will be the condition so that the man in the car just reaches the friend? The car just reaches the bike. What will be the condition for that to happen? Forget about the solving part of the question. Tell me what is the condition for which the car just reaches the bike. Everyone, what is the condition for that? Correct. You can see that the car is going with a constant velocity. Bike is accelerating. Bike is accelerating, right? So, if let's say if car reaches bike and before it reaches bike's velocity becomes more than car, then will car be able to catch the bike? Bike will accelerate, keep on increasing its velocity more and more, right? So the condition for maximum acceleration is that when the car reaches the bike, both of their velocities match. Okay. Because if bike's velocity becomes more than car before car even reaches the bike, then bike will run away. Okay. So is this clear or not? This condition is clear. This has nothing to do with the equations. This condition is clear or not? Again, the condition is that the velocity of the car should be equal to the velocity of the bike when car reaches bike. Okay. Arthur already got the answer. Anybody else wants to tell the answer? Okay. I can see many of you getting the answer. Okay. So 
Tell me few things here, everyone. It is approaching or not? We are talking about an approach here. Car is approaching the bike, right? So initial velocity of approach is what? Everyone. The bike is at rest, initial velocity is zero, and this is going with constant velocity of 20 meter per second. So everyone understand the initial velocity approach is 20 meter per second, right? Okay. Now tell me the final velocity of approach is what? Finally, when car reaches near the bike, final velocity approach is what? Use common sense. And keep it very, very simple in your head. Keep it very, very simple in your head. Final velocity of approach is what? When the car reaches near the bike. Both the velocity will be equal or not? Just now we discussed this at the top it is written. If both the velocities are equal, velocity of approach would become zero. I don't care what is the velocity of the bike, right? When the car reaches here, car velocity is constant 20. So bike's velocity should also reach 20 only. It should not be more than that. Otherwise bike will just run away. So 20 this side, 20 same side. This is bike, this is car. So approach is zero. All of you clear? Those who are telling something else, is it clear or not? Pratik, Aditya, uh, you can unmute yourself. Let us discuss. Unmute yourself. Oh, sir, I didn't understand how the final velocity becomes zero. Sir. Please just explain. Final that. velocity is not zero. Final velocity of the car is 20 only and the bike is also 20. So both of them are moving at 20, 20 now. Tell me what is the velocity of approach? Both are going this way only, 20. So velocity approaches. So it will become 20 minus 20, sir. 20 minus 20 is zero, na? Yes, right? Okay. Aditya, is it clear? Okay. Now, I want to find what is the value of A. So, accession of approach should be what in terms of A? In terms of A, what is the accession of approach? Is it plus A or minus A? Everyone, plus A or minus A? A is this way. So it is going away, right? So accident approach is minus A. Okay. And distance of approach is what? Distance of approach is what? How much distance they are approaching each other? hundred meters. Okay. Fine. Now you have to simply use V square equal to U square plus two a s over here. Final velocity approach is zero. Initial velocity of approach is 20 minus two a into hundred. So you get acceleration as two meter per second square. All of you type in make sense. Why acceleration is negative? Because acceleration is in this direction. Acceleration is trying to separate. You're trying to find what is approach acceleration. Separation acceleration is positive. Okay. But approach is negative. Not a very simple question, but then yes, uh, we need to get used to these kind of questions. Then only you will get ahead of others. Otherwise, you'll get the same thing which everybody else get. Lacks and lacks of students also get the same marks. You also get the same marks only. Okay, should we continue doing velocity of approach concept?
Okay, do this. How to know how to start with a numerical? See, there is no answer to that kind of question. You know, you're asking like how to play football kind of thing. I can tell you theoretically, this is the way to play football. But till you practice a lot, will you be become good at it? Tell me, Raj Venkat. Till you practice football, will you be able to become good at it by just learning how to play football on piece of paper? No, right? So you need to practice a lot of numericals and then only things will become, uh, you know, streamlined for you. But yeah, broad uh, steps we have already discussed. This is the last question on velocity of approach and separation. Some of the students are asking, how do you know which formula to use when? How many formulas you have? Three, only three question motions you have or not? Only three you have. So why there's so much confusion? You can try doing one, make using one formula, doesn't work out, then we use other one. Okay, and many times it is very obvious. You just write down what is given, what you have to find out. And then you automatically find out that, okay, this formula I should be using here. Every physics question, all of you listen carefully. Every physics question, draw a diagram. That is your, that is the step which you should never skip. Even if you get a very, very simple question, then also draw the diagram. Then on that diagram, write down whatever is given to you. And then you can see that suddenly things becomes very simple to you. Okay. And in that process, you may see that some of the students are very fast in getting the answer, but you don't need to worry about it. Okay. Just don't worry about who is getting the answer fast because you never know, right? People might be Googling who knows. So you just worry about yourself. Let others answer doesn't answer. You care about yourself. Do it systematically. And I'm telling you, if you follow all the steps while practicing, when exam comes, you'll be the fastest amongst all. Then you'll be mentally able to draw the diagram. Okay. So follow all the steps. Doesn't matter whether you're taking three times, four times, five times the amount of uh, time required to solve a question. Doesn't matter. You're just learning right now. But first step is draw the diagram, show all the values there. Should I show you how to do it in a step-by-step -step manner, drawing the diagram and everything? Or should I wait?
Okay, do it yourself. See, I'll do it step by step manner, but if you don't do it, everything is useless. Step by step uh, manner of solving question is there in the book also. Just copy it from the book, right? So first do it yourself, whatever you can understand, do it yourself. Even if you get the wrong answer, it doesn't matter. What do you understand? Do it first. I'll wait for another minute here. All right, so let us discuss this. Is there anyone who is about to get the answer? Anybody else who is about to get the answer? Okay, Saket got it. Let us see, everyone. Focus here. We are drawing a diagram here. A train starts from a station with a constant acceleration of 0.4 meter per second square. So. There is this train. It starts with like this you have to draw. Okay. L look at it carefully. Acceleration is 0.4 meter per second square. You don't need to read the entire question and then draw. While reading, you can draw. A passenger arrived at sta station six seconds after the end of the train left the very same point. So this is, let's say, the end of the train. T. So this T will reach here by the time the passenger is here. When passenger is over there, the train has moved forward, right? It has already left and there is a distance between passenger and the train. Okay. So this distance is for the six seconds. What is the least speed at which passenger can run and catch the train? So you need to find out with what speed passenger should run so that it is still able to catch the train. Okay, this diagram is clear to everyone. This is the way at least this much diagram you have to draw. Is there any confusion how you start drawing the diagram? Is clear or not? Type in. Now, now, yes, for the train, initial velocity is zero. It says it starts. Okay. Now, now, do, don't you think that it is better to find this distance between a uh, passenger and the train? Right? So, how will you find that? Which formula comes in your mind? T is given, initial loss is given, acceleration is given. So in order to find distance, which formula comes in your mind? You have to find distance. So now do I need to tell you that you have to use this or does it come automatically? What do you think? It should come automatically, right? Because U, V, T are given you to find S. This should come automatically. All right. So S is equal to U is zero, half acceleration is 0.4. Costo, what are you writing? Why that is for? This into six square, right? So this is 0.2, 36 into two, uh, 7.2 meters. All of you are getting 7.2? Now, till now, passenger was not there. Only one thing was moving. So for that, you don't need to consider separation and approach. So this is one part of the problem. Okay. 
only the train was moving now when passenger comes passenger is running so now train is also moving passenger is also moving so now you have to use velocity of approach and acceleration of approach and things like that when only one particle is moving you don't need to worry about it fine so now the problem is this now you have a situation like this in which the distance is 7.2 you have to find what should be the velocity here okay let's say this is u1 passenger's velocity is u1 and the train now the train will have velocity or not when it has moved 7.2 meters it will have velocity so u2 is a velocity it has an acceleration also 0.4 meter per second square is the acceleration okay so the velocity of the train becomes what after traveling for 6 seconds you can find out its velocity which is u2 is equal to initial velocity is 0 plus acceleration into t that is 2.4 meter per second this velocity is 2.4 meter per second till now all of us on the same page clear this is how it will be in j advanced so we are solving an advanced level numerical it's fine that you haven't got it okay don't worry about it so till now is it clear or not type in Can you repeat the answer? Answer? Sir, you watched it. What do you want? Explain the last part. Last part is this. See, this is, this is, this situation is when only train is moving. I want to find out what the train is doing when passenger has started running. So the train, although it actually started from rest, but when passengers started to run, the train had some velocity because it already has traveled for six seconds. So I found out velocity when the passenger has started running from here by using V is equal to U plus AT. So this is a situation for which I have to use velocity of approach concept okay fine now tell me now tell me what should be the uh, condition so that the passenger just reaches the train what should be the condition for it So do you agree that when passenger reaches when passenger reaches the train the velocity of the train final velocity of the train should become equal to the velocity of the passenger if let's say before the passenger reaches the train if train velocity becomes more, will the passenger be able to catch the train? No. So the final velocity of approach should be what? Finally, velocity of approach should be when passenger has just caught the train should be zero. Initial velocity of approach is how much? U1 minus 2.4. U n minus 2.4 and initial acceleration of approach is what? Sorry, acceleration of approach is what? Plus 0.4 or minus 0.4? Acceleration of approach. Minus of 0.4, right? The distance of approach is what? Distance of approach. 
7.2 point two distance they have to approach so which equation comes in your mind in order to find the value of u1 what should you do everyone do i need to tell you what one you have to do which equation you have to use you have to use v square equal to u square plus 2 as here right final velocity of approach is zero this is u1 minus 2.4 square minus 2 into 0.4 into 7.2 okay so u1 minus 2.4 whole square okay this will become equal to, don't type the same thing multiple times okay zayan so this will be equal to what this will become equal to what 7.2 into 0.8 56 okay so from here are you getting u1 to be equal to 4.8 so this is what you will get i mean i'm not sure whether this is what you will get i mean if you do it proper calculation you get the correct answer from here now fine so this is this is how it will be in j advanced okay so i am not expecting that you should be able to get the answer yourself but i have to show you how it will be in j advanced or not should i have not shown you how j advanced questions are how many of you think that should i not have shown you <laughs> so it is good that you know what it takes to solve a j advanced question right otherwise we will unnecessarily assume we will unnecessarily sometime assume that okay they, they will be very simple and this and that right but then yes some of us are uh, some of us may think that we don't know anything right some of us even i was when i was at your age and i i used to go to some coaching and uh, that uh, one of the teachers there had shown some tricky questions and i started hating that guy because he was giving the tough problems and then later i realized that he was uh, helping me to do well and uh, helping me to solve the difficult questions right so the trick here is that what you can do is i am not expecting that you should get the answer here right if you get it that is good but if you don't get it then uh, you know you have to struggle through and arrive somewhere and then ask doubts and learn to solve this question so you can either say that okay i don't want to do j advanced that is also fine there is nothing wrong with it you can say i don't want to do j advanced i will not do the tricky questions fine but if you want to do j advanced you need to go through these questions and these questions do do you think that uh, you will read theory and some day you will wake up and suddenly you will start getting these questions no you need to learn slowly and gradually it will happen and one day you will see that you will start getting it because you have practiced enough questions fine so let me go back to the neat ct and j main level questions in fact let us go and ha saket you can unmute and speak so why do we have to assume that the person needs to run to the front of the train to catch it if the train's end is uh, at the platform when he enters it won't it be enough that he runs as fast as the end of the train No, it. but if you read the question, it says that the end of the train left six seconds. Okay, it is not the train front is leaving; end of the train is leaving. Clear? Yes, sir. Let us take up 
uh, enough of velocity approach thing. Let's go back, back and back, more and more back. Do this, everyone. You can type in your answers as and when you get it. So, hmm. so uh, we assume gravity to be the same by 10 itself. Yes, assume G is 10. Assume acceleration due to gravity is 10 vertically downwards. Okay, Arthur got something. Saket got something. Should I share one write up on the velocity of separation and approach? I have written one document on it with certain examples. Will that help? Okay, just go through that uh, document which I am which I have written. I have there was this article which I had published. I'll try to find it out. Okay, everyone, let us solve it now. You have a balloon. This balloon is moving up five meter per second in upward direction. T equal to zero, balloon is at the ground. At T equal to 10 seconds, a ball is left gently from the balloon. So let's say balloon was at the ground and t equal to 10 seconds, it will be some certain height or not. Now, when you drop the ball, the ball will be at rest. What do you think? Will 
when you when you are standing here drop the ball will the ball be at rest everyone okay some of you are saying yes some of you are saying no now tell me here if you have let's say if you are traveling with there is a fighter plane okay you drop let's say bomb to the enemy okay now this bomb will go vertically down or it will go like this one or two how it will travel two why why it travels like two why what is the reason answer is correct correct initially it will try to move it will try to move with the same velocity as it was moving earlier that is the property of in, uh, the mass it is inertia all right so initially it will try to move with the same velocity as it was earlier itself so earlier the ball which was there in the balloon was moving with 5 meter per second only or not so it will continue to move up 5 meter per second but what will happen soon because of the gravity it will lose the momentum and then come down is it clear type in all of you is it clear what i have told here is it clear all right so we need to find the speed of the ball at the ground right so first of all i need to find out what is this distance s isn't it so it was going up with 5 meter per second this distance is 10 into 5 which is 50 meters how many if you got 50 meters the distance balloon will go up to is 15 meters how many if you got it good so 50 meters is this distance so this 50 meters and when you drop the ball when you drop the ball the initial velocity is what initial velocity is upward let us assume upward to be positive upward is positive so initial velocity is plus 5 meter per second okay so displacement is what plus 50 or minus 50 when it goes down and hits here that is minus 50 meters okay what about the acceleration plus 10 or minus 10 minus 10 minus it will be it is down right all right so up is positive right so acceleration is down so acceleration is negative or not right it is negative so we need to find final velocity now so which formula do we use what do you think correct so now do do we need to do i need to tell you which formula do you have to use once you write like this isn't it become very obvious like this when you write isn't become very obvious which formula to use yes or no those who were answering who were asking so u square is 5 square all right u is 5 plus 2 into minus 10 
into minus 50. So v square is equal to 25 plus 200. Fine. So v is root over 225. Okay. Which is how much? It's root over 1000. So 2 into 10. Oh, 20 into 50. Oh. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. This is 1000. Is 100 into 10. So V is root over 1025. Which is roughly what? 32. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Just type. So, you know, we are getting more than 32. The reason is because you have taken GS 10. All right. If you take GS 9.8, you will get much closer to the 32. Fine. So that is how you solve this question. Clear? Let's look at one more question. Not this one. This one. Sorry. Okay, Saket got something, others? Again, they are asking the distance from the ground, okay? Make sure you take care of it. <laughs> Sake, change the answer quickly. I hope all of you have received the material. Is there anyone who did not receive the centum module?
message me those who haven't received please message me with your complete address all right with pin code <laughs> so shall we discuss this everyone Two minutes you want. Okay, let us discuss this. Already we have spent five six minutes on this question. Let us see. A ball is released from the top of the tower of height h meters. It takes t seconds to reach the ground. So. i can use s equal to ut plus half at square okay so s is h u is 0 so it becomes half into g is acceleration into t square so this is h you need to find out what is the position of the ball in t by 3 seconds so this is h so in t by 3 seconds S is half g into t by three square, so that is one ninth of half g t square, which is h by nine. H by nine from top or bottom. H by nine from top or the bottom. From the top. So from ground it is what. H minus H by nine from the ground. That is eight H by nine. Clear, everyone. Everyone clear. Type in. Oh, this is this is J main level. The easy question of J mains. Okay. Now don't ask every time we solve a question. Whether it is J main, J advance, or whatever it is, okay, just a question. Could you explain the last step again? See, instead of t, we are substituting t by three. All right. So s becomes half of g into t by three square. So one by nine of half g t square. So that is h by nine. All right. okay maybe we can take one more do this probably the last question for today you get you want more time for this take 3 minutes then we start discussing
Naren is the first. No, not Naren. Pratik is the first one to answer. Then Naren has answered. Anybody else? GT Aditya. What is the full form of GT Aditya? It's Aditya GT. Zayan. Soumya, what is your answer? See, most of the question that I solve with you guys, I'm solving it for the first time, and I do not know the final answer. I do not know the solution. Why I do that? Because I want to think like a student, so that when I solve it, you will feel that how to start the struggle or how to approach a question. It is completely. I am looking at it for the first time, so you will understand exactly how to approach a question. All right, so so that you can relate more to me when I am solving a question. Fine. So I don't know the final answer. So if you are asking, is this correct or not? All right, Aditya has answered. Shall we discuss now? I can see some of your answer D, some of your answer C. Let us see whether C is correct. A ball is dropped from the roof. Ball is dropped from the roof of a building can reach the ground in five seconds. So if this is height h. A ball is dropped; it reaches in five seconds. So like this, you can draw a figure like that, right? Uh, Accessing due to gravity, g is vertically down. So this is the first thing. Then, if a ball is stopped after three seconds of its fall and fall again, then what is the time taken by the ball? Okay. So all of you agree, first of all, that h is equal to half g into five square. All of you agree with this or not? Twenty-five by two times g is h, right? Now, after three seconds, it stopped. Let's say it is stopped here. So, in three seconds, what is the distance traveled? Let's say this distance traveled is s one. So that will be h minus s one. Total distance is h. So S one would be equal to half g into three square, right? So that is nine by two times g. Yes or no, everyone? So the remaining distance is h minus S one, which is twenty five minus nine is how much? Sixteen. Sixteen by two. Eight, so eight G. How many of you got till here? This distance is eight G. Okay, good. So this distance is equal to half G into T two square, right? Because again the velocity here is zero. So now I'll consider this point. And that point between these two point, I am using s equal to u t plus half a t square. U is zero, right? So eight g is equal to g by two t two square. So t two is how much? Root of sixteen, which is four seconds. Option is D. All right. Okay. Now, let me summarize. There you go. Today we have solved many tricky questions. Okay. So I hope you guys are not discouraged because of that. Fine. The purpose of solving tricky questions. The 
understand the purpose the purpose of solving tricky questions is so that when you do your assignments or when you practice yourself then you will be able to relate what we have done if we keep on doing the same type of problem very very simple ones so many of those questions then when you do the actual exam you will see a lot of tricky questions then you will not be able to score well now we have got exposed to many different like today we have taken so many varieties of the question yes or no right so in uh, in a short span of time we have done many varieties so what you can do is i would suggest that you please watch the recording once again all these question if i were at your age i would not have got more than couple of questions in the today's class but what i would have done i would have sat and watched the videos so that i get a like when you watch the video you can pause you can watch it again and all that thing we can do don't worry about don't worry about that oh my time is gone i have uh, i am able to uh, you know i have only 4 hours i am able to watch the recording only i will not be able to solve 100 questions 200 questions no that doesn't matter at all it does not matter how many questions you solve the number of marks you get at the end is not proportional to number of questions you are solving it is proportional to how much struggle you are having while solving these questions okay so just do that hard work where you you can be as slow as you want but if you are understanding it you can watch it again if you understand it that is the best thing fine now somebody is asking where the recording will be uploaded all the recordings are getting uploaded to learnist where you do your assignments also i will share the link once again you don't need to ask for the class notes you don't need to ask for the assignment everything is there fine all right so that's it from my side it was a tricky session for all of you but i hope you have learned and got exposed to many new things today so thanks for coming in bye for now so thank you so very so bye bye so message me whatever is there message me i'll reply okay thank bye you so bye sir